North American aviation system studies and conceptual designs are being advanced to working hardware for deep submergence applications as a corporate-wide effort. North American Aviation is utilizing its extensive aerospace simulation capability and facilities for deep submergence studies. Aircraft and spacecraft simulators have been reprogrammed to answer questions posed by the engineer concerned with undersea craft design and their operations. Dynamic simulators are being employed for human engineering studies associated with intricate maneuvers at varying combinations of vehicle attitudes. Full-scale deep submergence rescue vehicle mock-ups of two pressure hull configurations were prepared for human engineering studies of displays, controls, equipment layout, and personnel loading experiments. One is a spherical hull configuration composed of three interconnected spherical compartments over a central transfer skirt. The forward operator's compartment and the aft rescuee compartment are represented in the mock-up by a single seven and a half foot sphere attached to a five foot diameter mid-sphere. The cylindrical rescuee compartment has an inner diameter of six feet seven inches. The hemispherical end section inside diameters are 7 feet 5 inches. The operator's compartment is at the forward end of the hull and is isolated from the rescuee compartment by a pressure bulkhead with its access hatch. The transfer skirt is attached to the aft end of the life hull. The overall length of the rescuee compartment is 8 feet 8 inches. The operator's compartment, 5 feet 4 inches. Total pressure hull length, 14 feet. Using each type of pressure hull, valuable comparative information has been obtained from simulated rescuee transfer trials. Various techniques for moving personnel from one compartment to another were evaluated. These experiments establish the requirements for locating ladders, steps, and handholds. At present, this large mock-up sphere also serves as the operator's compartment for instrumentation layout studies. Using the feet-first entry method, Embarkation of 12 able-bodied subjects and the corpsman into the spherical hull configuration can be performed within two minutes. Most subjects used were taller and heavier than the median for today's submarine personnel. Not all rescuees can be expected to be fully capable of climbing ladders without assistance. 
harnesses, and a hoist for lifting incapacitated personnel into the mid-sphere may be required. A hoist, provided with a foot control, permits the corpsman to use his arm to assist in the transfer of an injured man. After a subject is hoisted into the mid-sphere, transfer difficulties are encountered by the corpsman, particularly when subjects simulate unconsciousness. Litterborne personnel are difficult to manage in the restricted space available. An improved litter will be required for patients to be brought into the rescuee compartment through the mid-sphere. The cylindrical configuration pressure hull can receive 17 able-bodied rescuees and the corpsman in less than two minutes when the vehicle is level. More rescuees can be accommodated if time and conditions warrant. However, crowding would absorb the corpsman's available free space to move about within the rescuee compartment. The operator's compartment has been emptied of all controls and displays to permit this direct view of the rescuee's compartment. Two injured patients or able-bodied seamen are accommodated on litters hung to the rescuee compartment overhead.
Using an electric hoist, disabled personnel are transferred into the cylindrical pressure hull. In the 45 degree pitch attitude, loading personnel becomes more arduous. Safety lines and retaining harness are required for all rescuees. In the 45 degree roll attitude, Safety lines and retaining harness are also required for the personnel. In both pitch and roll conditions, the corpsman can carry out his duties, but at reduced efficiency. Since significant vehicle attitude changes are expected, human engineering studies are also conducted in the simulation laboratory to evaluate the 45 degree angular motion changes on operator effectiveness. The five and one half foot long, seven and one half foot wide operator's compartment is separated from the rescuee compartment by a watertight bulkhead. The total complement of specified equipment for operating the rescue vehicle has been fitted into the operator's compartment as full size models. Human engineering of these displays and equipment is underway. The performance of living subjects in the cylindrical operator's compartment is being compared with that of the spherical hull. Direct view piloting for either surface or submerged maneuvering can be accomplished through this turret viewpoint located directly above the operator's console. In addition, an unobstructed path to optical viewing ports located on the lower starboard section of the bow is available to the operator while seated. Closer access to the port for micromaneuvering can be attained by kneeling and using the remote vehicle control box. The cylindrical hull configuration offers good personnel capacity, easy entry for rescuees, and the availability of several direct viewing ports for maneuvering. Within an overall length of 36 feet, a 5,000 foot test depth hull can be realized, carrying 160 kilowatt hours of batteries, all within a 50,000 pound dry weight vehicle system. North American Aviation, through mock-up studies, has been able to analyze a wide variety of human engineering problems and provide practical solutions to advanced vehicle requirements. These mock-ups have provided reliable, practical, and economical solutions to problems associated with a deep submergence rescue vehicle design.